Thanks very much. Thanks for having me here. I'm really happy to be here. So I was asked to talk about early warning system and how it can benefit farm management in its decision system. And I will talk specifically uh, the experience that we conducted in uh, Kafrin, in Senegal, located in West Africa. And actually what I'm trying to do is uh, how come climate will help farmers in making decisions during the rainy season or the cropping season. Uh, is there a pointer? Oh yes. Okay. So farmers have to make many uh, have to take many decisions in this uh, rainy season, like how to when to prepare the field and how to better prepare it, selecting the right crop. As you know, I'm talking specifically over the Sahel, where the growing season is just three to four months. It can change sometimes four months. Sometimes it's three months only. So it's 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 also important for farmers to select the right crop variety. The planting date is very important, when to plant, the onset of the rainy season, when to weeding, applying fertilizer, pesticide, harvesting, storage. And all those decisions, some are climate related, of course, but many of them depend on a lot of drivers, what I call drivers here. Could be financial, could be technological limited, could be just sociological heritage of the farmers. It could be some belief or just the environment, or it could be also climate or weather dependent. And this is where we will emphasize here and how to bring the right information for actionable decision. Just to introduce the Sahel, it's a short rainy season, just four months, starting in July, August, September, and October, it's gone. And we have strong climate variability over the Sahel. This is the region what I call Sahel here. If you call the very strong you know, gradient of rainfall, of soil type, of vegetation, everything. It's really very steep gradient here over the Sahel of this country, going from Senegal all the way to southern Sudan. Sudan. There is a strong variability, and also, there is a huge impact of climate variabilities. As you can see, malaria is a far most killing disease. It's a waterborne disease, so related to climate somehow. And also, it will affect you know people, farmers when they work, what they have to work with. Everything is driven by power, manpower, hand work. Agriculture, for example, taking Senegal, agri rain-fed agriculture is 90 percent of the agriculture. So everything is related to the rainfall. And also, this environment resources, I mean, economic resources are really, really limited. So we need really to plan. Just to give you an idea of the variability of the rainfall, here is an index over the soil, the regions that I show, have shown. And you can see that it was wet before the 50s, and afterwards they go to the steep dry that uh, reaches uh, the points in 1984, and after we are going now to the trend, wet trend. So there is a strong variability is this time scale, which is called the decadal time scale. But if you look at year to year also, we have very strong variability. So that's why we really need climate information to plan in this area. But it's not all. This is the one example in Burkina Faso, also true for Senegal. You see, in, in, during 2009, the season was really dry. Everything is dry, and only one event changed everything. Only one event, one rainfall event, one rainfall in 1st of September can everything. So it's very important also to know the sub-seasonal variability. The day-to-day -day variability is very important. So as you can see, all time scales are really important for farm management. Another example is really important for agriculture. I'm showing two years that are really similar. This is 1972, this is 1989. Here we have station going from south to north, and here we have the season. And you can see that all stations are experiencing rainfall event, onset, quite at the same time. But in 1972, you have a dry spell over the northern part here. So you have this rainfall event going to 20 millimeters, which is a good rain actually to, uh, to plant. But afterward, you use a strong dry spell. So if farmers plant it here, everything will be lost. And you have also to plant again, to have to buy the seed and come back and plant again, prepare the field. So it's a lot of effort. So if the farmers know that this is the rain event search, but there are strong probability to have dry spell, you would not plant, you just wait until to have here. And there is another contrasted year when we have the same period, the rain, and it's continued. So these, those are just challenges for farmers to get climate information. What do you call false start and true start in the climate? So uh, what kind of information can you provide to farmers during the cropping season? Before the rainy season, we give seasonal forecasting, just an estimate how the season will be. It's going to be a dry season, it will be a wet season, it will be just a normal season. So farmers to plant to see that what crop is more you know, suited for this season. The onset also is very important. The dry season lasts for like seven to eight months. 
So eight months, the farmers have to do something else. So we want to know when to come back to prepare the field, and what kind of, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> and uh, what is the optimum date for planting? It's very important to prepare the field and to know that which date are really the optimum date, as I saw you previously. And during the rainy season, the cropping season, we are providing different kind of, you know, what you call seamless forecasts, going from all time scale. We go from now scatting, uh, now now casting, mean just rain, uh, rainfall observed by satellite, observed by just uh, radar, just 30 minutes to one hour, two hours forecast. A daily forecast for uh, field work, like when to apply fertilizer. But as you know, fertilizer is very expensive for farmers in this region. So if they apply fertilizer and the next day it rains, everything is washed out. So it needs to have the, the, uh, the weather forecast to know that it is the right period to apply fertilizer or not. Same thing for, fertilizer, uh, for pesticide. 10 day forecast to plant for a long time scale. And also at the, at the uh, end of the rainy season, uh, we, we, uh, during the rainy season, we update always the seasonal forecasting because as climate forecasting is changing. And during the maturing and the end, farmers need also to know what is the right period to start you know, uh, making harvesting. And also we have dry season. So it's very important to make focus the dry season. Because when farmers crop, they just leave it outside. They don't have storage. So if they didn't have any rain, any rain after the rainy season, it will just, just you know, be catastrophic for farmers. So all this information are important. And we need to provide this information, what we call just an early warning system for the farmers. How do you proceed now concretely with farmers in the experience we have in Kafrin? You need just to make it, to create the demand, what we call demand driven, to make sure that you know what are the needs of farmers, what, cli and information, what kind of information farmers need. And also to make it kind of dynamical, where you exchange, you have participatory group here, where we meet with farmers and some extension people, and we talk about what kind of information farmers need, which kind of format, and all those kind of questions. After what we set up in Kafrin is just this kind of early warning system that we, what we get. What we have here on the top is just the climate information. This is kind of the input that people need. And we have it, the seasonal weather on the now casting. And this is done by the National Weather Services. And afterward, at the local level, this is based now in Kafrin itself, all those uh, technical you know, organizations working on rainfall or on, for, on rainfall or on farming are sitting together each 10 days. And when they get the climate information, and knowing the current, you know, monitoring what's happening really in the field, they can anticipate to say that, OK, this is what we have. So if the rainy season, the forecast the next 10 days will be such, so this is the best way to do things. This is the best you know, action to take. And then they make it and package it kind of, you know, having some kind of bulletin, having some kind of information, and they start disseminating. And they use a lot of things. They use rural radio is the most important one that we use in the region. They can use SMS because all the farmers quite have a cell phone in this region. And women particularly ask that they use this information during social ga gathering. In this uh, part of the world, each week quite there is something happening. Baby naming, you know, it, and then women get together. And this is the best way for them, uh, best medium to get the information. Also, we have bulletin that we communicate to decision. And also, we have the Red Cross network that we use. We also use the uh, uh, Red Cross network, especially when we have strong event. And sometimes when you have strong event, the National Weather Service can also bypass this group and directly reach the farmers through rural radio, through text messages, and through uh, the Red Cross uh, network. Uh, what are the, the kind of challenges? One challenge is just the language. It's very important. You have to talk, of course, the local language, the Wolof, but also the technical language. Sometimes we're talking about millimeter of rain, and it makes sense for us, but not for the farmers. So we needed to document this. What we did, we gave some rain goes to the farmers, many rain goes actually. And then we ask them just to, uh, to monitor it and to record the rain and send it to us back. And that's, uh, this gives them an, an, an idea what 20 millimeters mean, what 10 millimeters mean, because they, they record it actually. So they know, they're used to it. So now when we tell them the focus is saying we have a probability to have it 20, 20 millimeters of rainfall, it makes more sense for them. So it's very important. And what one thing really helps us for the upscaling is just the rural region. This is a network, actually. All those red, this is Senegal, sorry, <laughs> located here in, uh, in, in Africa. This is Africa. This is where we are. <laughs> and then uh, this is Senegal. So this is a network of rural region. Last year, or the year before, we partnered with Iraq, uh, National Union of uh, Rural Region of Senegal. And this is all the regions they have in the country. And this is their website, actually. And what we did, we trained them first to 
know our jargon, what we use, to tell them what our seasonal forecasting, our uncertainties, how to interpret and to give them all our products and go through them during the workshop to interpret them, so and so forth. And then what we did, uh, we give them the seasonal forecasting and we give them also kind of for, um, different kind of forecast and they just disseminate it during their work, uh, network. And those, all those red points is where they have a rural radio. So they are really well uh, like in Senegal. And for the first phase, we train just all those, you know, those one, two, three, four, six actually. Six uh, uh, journalists coming from this rural region was trained about how to interpret seasonal forecasting, so and so forth. And after we make a kind of a broadcasting live, where we came and explained to them, you know, what, is, what kind of product do we use, what, is, what does it mean, how to interpret that, and they use it. And we plan next year to, to train as much as we can. Uh, as, uh, as you go forth in this, in this uh, project. It's very important for us to have this network and it allows us really to upscale to the level of, of people getting the information that we have right now in Senegal. So just to summarize, <coughs> uh, it's very important to know decision, farmers' decision system. That was our, our first uh, survey that we made, why farmers are making decisions, you know, and how climate information can help them in this decision. And talking with them, we knew that rainfall beyond the rainy season, actually, what we call extra rainfall, is very important for them because the crop is always outside. And in 2012, our climate system, information system, works really for farmers because we forecasted one event during March, and then farmers did save a lot in their crop because their crop was less outside. The onset is very important for the farmers. It comes very clearly that it helps them to save money and energy at the same time because they have to repeat the, the planting. Seasonal forecast is important, but you need to be actionable. I mean, seasonal forecast alone is not really helpful. You need to give them also, you know, things. That's why, thank you. <laughs> That's why now we are partnering with some bank in Senegal where they can use seasonal forecasting uh, to, to, to lend money to the, to the, to the farmers. Weather forecast is very important. So we give one to two days, up to 10 days ahead forecast for the working group that is based in, in Kafrin. And now, now casting is very important because it's very accurate. Because you, you can see the rainy season, the, the rainy event happening. Everything is from east to west in, in West Africa. So you can see that the squall line coming and then tell farmers just to, to go. There is a strong rainy event happening. I'm coming to the challenge now. <clears throat> Still, farmers are asking rainfall, you know, at the farm scale. You know, they know that when we give them the network of, of rain gauge, they know that it's raining in their uh, farm and not in the other farm. So they ask if I can have specific focus in my farm that we cannot deliver for the moment, downscaling. Also, climate information. Even you go, let's say you tell them this season going to be wet. So what if they don't have more mean of more opportunities to take advantage of this season? It's not it's not useful. So you need to partner with some bank or the government that they know. So that's why now we are going so forth on implementing insurance. You know, so when the season is dry, at least farmers can get something out of it. If the season is good, at least the state or the uh, or the uh, the bank know and can do more for the for the farmers communication is very important for us the content the format accessibility of the uh, communication feedback and also knowing the information of climate is really perishable one thing important also is who going to call for the disaster let's say you have early warning system who will you give to you know there's always kind of institutional arrangement that you need to know of and to know that which is your contact point that's very important for this area Accuracy of the forecast. The probabilistic language that we have is still a problem for, you know, for more for decision makers than, than farmers, because farmers have to have to take some kind of, you know, betting. But, you know, decision policy, we kind of use the early warning system, need to know for sure that things are happening or not, not in a lang probabilistic language. This is a challenge for us. We are trying to use as a, as a mean. How do you combinate the uncertainties for the forecast? But even climate forecast is coming with uncertainties. If you do a multi-modeling or you know, ensemble modeling, you know that there is a range of possibilities. How do you communicate that? How do you build that into communication? That's also challenging that we have. And last is also, when you engage this early warning system, always decision makers will tell you, even you give them the right information, you say, and what will, are you sure? That's the first question we'll ask you. If you say there is a strong event coming, or we are expecting a dry spell, it's telling you, are you sure? And then next is, what if it doesn't happen? 
because he's a decision maker. He's just thinking that if we say to people that there is a strong event coming and it doesn't happen, you know, you know what will go on. So that's a very important credibility and uh, building the false alarm. When you have false alarm or loss, it's really a problem. And now we had a, a visiting coming from Sika, for SIAT in South South Exchange. It was interesting, actually, for farmers in this region to have other farmers coming and visit them and exchange, you know, experience and to know that what they are doing are not just in this place of Kafrin, but it's more than that. So we have a delegation coming from uh, Colombia come to visit uh, West Africa, what we are doing and to learn. And now we are planning to have a visit back to Colombia so that farmers in uh, uh, Kafrin can learn also what's happening there. Thanks very much. Thank you.